This episode is dedicated to commemorate 35 years of the Chernobyl disaster. We have to remember heroes who sacrificed their lives to save all of us. The Soviet regime that tried to cover up this nuclear disaster is responsible for it. Hello my friends and welcome to another episode of Inside Out Electronics. And today we are looking at this um, uh, raritad from the Soviet era. This is the Zimeter uh, Ganger counter uh, which I, uh, my dad actually bought when was the um, Chernobyl crisis so my dad bought it because he was afraid that you know we're gonna get some portion of radiation so he bought it to protect essentially a family so this one is really really old I in one of the previous videos I already took it apart in order to mm, investigate what's going on with this screen as, as you see it's still um, in pieces so I didn't get the parts replacement parts in order to fix that screen but while I was disassembling it it was a little bit more uh, problems I discovered along the way so and uh, as you know this year uh, is commemoration of 35 years of Chernobyl uh, disaster and because uh, we want to remember, always remember that first of all that uh, Soviet Union was um, quite responsible for what's happened, like a government at the time was quite uh, neglecting uh, protocols and rules and people's life and that's we end up with many many people uh, thousands of people affected uh, all around the world essentially and a piece of Ukraine essentially is um, unlivable quite a chunk of Ukraine so and obviously some of you might see in movie Chernobyl which is about what's happened and it was really scary I was really young a little boy and I was really scared of what is going on anyways I still remember that fear of radiation even to this day so in this video I would like to uh, restore this um, radiation meter and uh, obviously I won't be able to restore the screen as you see it's all like leaked the liquid crystal all over the place but at least it actually has some signs of life so um, before we actually proceed to my like um, uh, to further let's uh, have this battery and I would like to actually pop it in here and see if it actually shows any sign of life the last time it did but oh, it's really hard to see you see that indication is zero so it essentially shows zero 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 broken zero and zero so display sort of works so that give, gives me hope so it's probably not gonna count because those super flimsy wires over here is falling apart so, in, so logic board is separating from the the controller so the test board I'm not gonna continue bugging this guy so what we're gonna do here is uh, to um, probably take all these pieces apart for example I'm gonna unsolder these battery wires and other things and I would be able to separate those boards and I'm probably gonna replace all those very flimsy wires by something else in preparation to replace the screen okay so uh, first of all let's remove it from this container the problem is it's all like one piece you have to be super careful because no it's not serviceable at all unfortunately I'd like to fix that. Okay, some bolts and screws. I'm gonna stay. I have a schematic, by the way, over here as well. Um, bolts and screws go back in the box. And what? Uh, so maybe I should. Oh wow! It's so many wires. And nothing is. So I decided to unsolder things. Okay, first of all, let's unsolder this um, piezo crystal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I may re replace. Looks like it has uses different wires. Okay, that's already freed. Oh, looks like it's not just over yet. There's a whole bunch of 
wires for external Geiger counter. Yikes. Yeah, whoever came up with this unserviceable shit is like, I don't know, we see how everything was done in Soviet Union. It's just not serviceable and it's very fragile. I don't even know how to approach it. Maybe I just unsolder this. Probably unsolder this board all together. Okay. So this is the detector board, so it contains two, um, uh, uh, how do you call it, not radiation per se detectors, those are particles, fast radiation particles in detector. So this thing, when it detects particle, there is a, a conductivity increased in inside of one of those uh, tubes or in both of them. So in this case there are two, but there is more sensitive element, uh, more sensitive device which contains four of them. So this one is not as sensitive, I would like to have the one with four, so maybe eventually I will upgrade this one for four elements. I need to research this subject more. So as you see, this one is um, those um, detectors made in uh, nine months of uh, 1990. So that means essentially that that whole thing was purchased probably sometime in 1990. Oh, it says actually date of uh, manufacturing March 91st, so 1991st. The price of this thing was 202 rubles at the time, Soviet Union was um, uh, using rubles. So unfortunately, or fortunately, this unit is number 6293, 9 volt battery. Um, this was actually the final day of Soviet Union, so yeah, it's another very interesting aspect of it. Okay, we're gonna put this aside for now, not gonna use it. Uh, that there is no issue with that thing. Okay, let's continue with our exploration down the. You see, as I'm touching this thing, this little stupid wires, they're just falling apart, and um, it's just very annoying, unfortunate, and very unfortunate. It's um, very awkward to what to work with this device because it's not de designed with this service ability in mind. It just fall apart, whatever. Okay, I don't know what to do with this external connector. Maybe just completely unsolder this thing because why? I don't really care about it per se. Yeah, you're gonna just unsolder it completely. This um, DIN connector is to connect external sensor and obviously I'm not gonna do that. 
because I don't have external sensor. I don't even know how would I use it. I can take a look at this poss possibility of this, but so this gives me a possibility to actually clean up this case. Uh, also manufacture a battery compartment because it was lost, unfortunately. Looks like it was sort of waterproofish uh, thing because it has those rubber gaskets everywhere. This is actually glued. Um, this um, gasket over here for the buttons, so that's actually nicely done. Mm, the only thing is kind of stupid that those power holes. Why would you? use the gaskets everywhere and they yeah and water can just go through here so doesn't make sense maybe just dust <laughs> maybe just dust proof uh, this is soviet dim connector for you this is how it look like so uh, it's some sort of like protection over here but you can just remove this plug this is a buzzer a piezo buzzer polarity i think doesn't matter for this guy yeah I probably replaced this one with something like like that, uh, nicer and more uh, stiffer, nicer wires, you can see polarization here, <laughs> things like that. Uh, very cool that they done actually um, inserts, so metal threaded inserts, so that's really good. So here we are, gonna just yank this one, okay, so that goes into cleaning, uh, I'm not gonna touch that, I'm gonna keep the piezo buzzer which is, as far as I remember, it's relatively loud, so no problem. Clean up all this gunk over here, this disintegrated foam of some sort, yeah. Anyways, the most important part and most interesting part is here. Okay, more falling wires. So we have two boards. Unfortunately, it's not easy to, like, work with them, because it looks like how many wires, like one, two, three, they are disconnecting. Oh, maybe this one from the... From the external. Yeah. So this is a... Uh, this board is for detector, so it generates high voltage of certain frequency. And this is essentially an analog part. Uh, not sure how, what kind of, how, kind of high voltage, I think it's around 400 volts. So here is transformer, here is um, uh, diode capacitor voltage multiplier. Um, so what's very, very interesting, which I never actually pay attention to uh, before, let's remove this little thing, is, is this Rubicon capacitor over here. All right. This Rubicon capacitor is original because it has conformal coating on it, right? And I'm still shocked, like I'm actually shocked to see in Soviet production a Rubicon capacitor. Like I, when I actually realized that, I almost fall off my chair. I thought like someone replaced it, but no, it is original Rubicon capacitor. Here is, um, it, it would kind of... 47 microfarad, 16 volt, and this guy, what is, f there is another capacitor, 5 microfarad, whatever. There's only two capacitors I see, electrolytic capacitors, and they probably part of a um, uh, power supply for, 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 for this uh, oscillator circuit, yeah. Or they they are, or they are just a um, uh, filtering capacitor. But because you're powering up this from the battery, you don't really need a filtering capacitor. Uh, let me pull up the schematic. I have like two pieces of pap papers. Uh, they are pretty much identical. Oh yeah. Okay. So here's this. Uh, probably gonna zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so here's analog part, and here's our transformer error and diode uh, capacitor multiplier. All right, so here two of our um, detectors. Okay, it can be four. And by the way, here is the um, DIN connector, and here is the connector of his another a detector over here. So this is how it can be connected. So um, this I gonna remove, and there, this there is a plug, I guess. 
oh this block is supposed to have a jumper so I have to jump it just somewhere in schematic in order to remove this to have it I guess operational and uh, here are our one capacitor 47 microfarad between 12 and 10 which is essentially plus and minus and uh, there is a five microfarad capacitor between the same pretty much between uh, oh no no it is through the resistor so yeah it's part of this circuit so it looks like there is another capacitor over here 0.22 C7 but that's probably a mistake because I do not see third electrolytic nowhere here right yeah C7. I don't even know where the C7 because there is no a silk screen oh there is silk screen not silk screen per se it's actually PCB screen C7 where are you mm, oh wow what the heck is this some kind of blotch over here of this one is busted. It looks like this capacitor was actually kind of replaced. Wow. Or, I don't know, maybe not, but this looks like someone was working on it. It was not me. What the hell is this C7? Maybe it was optimized out because I see C9, 13C11, V7, V6, V76, VT3, the transistor, V, V is a diode probably. Well, C6 over here. Well, there is no C7. Unless I have the wrong a oh, V3 yeah, diode or yeah. no can't can't seems to find it. It's really really crude. Um, like it's it just yeah. It just screams at you at like very very old and Soviet kind of style. Um, development in or type of manufacturing yeah it's just uh, but whatever nevertheless it was working curious what is that diode okay that's probably a diode of some sort this guy yeah so yeah, many of those wires they have to be um, replaced. You're gonna just replace them. It's essentially not that many. I'm wondering what's the distance between boards. Can I use like Dupont connectors or you know things like that? Because that's just just annoying. Let me see something. I think that's the distance. Uh, between boards, the distance of this standoff. That's the thing. It goes like this. Yeah. So maybe it won't be enough. Maybe it was. It would be. Anyways. Wow. I just thought about something. If you really look closer, maybe I can just put Dupont's. <gasps> Wow, that will be amazing if I can just make those two boards plug into one into each other. Let me try that. That will be that will be a kick-ass solution. If they would just plug in, that's it. That would solve everything because this is retarded. Those stupid wires. All right. Okay. So we I think we do have a chance to actually do this, but looks like not everything will be matching. So over here, oh, it's really really hard to see. Looks like those two those two would be matching those two would be matching to the pair this number five number six and number nine will be matching and maybe over here number ten is matching 
uh, 11 is not, looks like it just oh, 11 over here and it goes through here and this 12 I don't even know where it goes potentially somewhere here but I do not know so but at least that's gonna be quite substantial if I just do that so I do have this like you're gonna be a pair over here, pair over here a one, one one over here and one over here, yeah, that's and one another over here. It's sort of kind of not here, not there, um, but still, um, the only the height is obviously is way off. Okay, it's good four millimeters off, but I already solved this. Uh, so, what I've done, I shaved this substantially and uh, cut off this like substantially as well so technically I think I can make it shorter I can try at least I can try this combination of those two make them as this it's I don't know if it's worth it maybe just you know put some wires and don't bother but next time I'm gonna play with it it's gonna be just as easy as as uh, plug it in and out so it's really really tempting so let me think if I can do this also I have let me I'll be back okay guys finally I got what I was waiting for take a look at this so I got this very shallow uh, header uh, um, header connector over here and uh, this is standard this is very shallow so if you combine those two together and take this standoff take a look at this it's precisely matching the size of those two together. Obviously, when I solder this guy, I have to cut off pins uh, for about a probably, you know, two millimeters or maybe like three millimeters. No, in, in order to make sure they're not gonna protrude on the other side. But this is general idea. So I'm gonna solder. Uh, I'm not sure which one where. Like for example, over here, and this is gonna be over here, and which is which allow me, which will allow me to actually plug in one board into another without having all this mess of a wire. So let's do it. The only downside I have to remember that back in Soviet Union, they are using 2.5 millimeter. Um, uh, with in between uh, pins over here and this one is 254 so we won't be able for example to plug in um, just for example if you would have this long um, pad over here and try to solder this thing it will not fit eventually is if you see over here they are misaligned because they are different the step is different so for example if you would use only like four or five that's going to be fine you would be able to push it in but if you want to use like many of them like 10 15 20 no freaking way yeah look they start to be misaligned over here so this is something to consider and on another hand we even won't be able to plug in this huge bar over here because there are screw holes there are empty spaces which essentially I can just cut off some pins no big deal but for example over here we have again five even this is even funny over here this pad anyway so we have to do some MacGyvering in order to actually fit that in the same goes on the other side so yeah so bear with me let's try to actually modify it uh, always um, you have to be very careful on soldering those pads over here because knowing historically that again back in Soviet times it was very bad quality PCBs and pads were lifting like
Uh, okay, so after fiddling with this thing for quite a while, I think we have a success. As you see, you have to come up with some angled uh, connectors in order to actually properly match those two boards. And obviously it's all looking like really nilly. It was really hard, but at least now you can just do this. And that's it. And I check the contacts and contact is fine. So it's looking so much better. So now I have to put this little um, display board back on. Mm, I think it's supposed to go like this. It fell out. Actually, technically, for all these repairs, I shouldn't even took this out. So I was premature. Yeah, I don't know how this polarizer has to be. I think this side is sort of cleaner, so I assume it was like that. Yeah, I didn't, need, didn't really need to remove this polarizer. Oh, there are some screws, I guess. So I have to put those little bolts and I don't know where are they. Yeah, so better not to touch this one. Hmm, we may have a problem over here a little bit. So, so instead of this, I may use just a regular tiny M3 screw. M3 nut, I mean. Well, unfortunately, this display is gone, so we have to use a replacement. So definitely, this this is gonna be changed. But I don't have a part at the moment, so like I have to do with what I have. So on this side, I decided to use this nylon a, a nut, which I actually chopped on both sides, like this. As you see, like it's not a looking anymore and it's nicely fits in there so yeah it's another fiddling have to do in order to accommodate all this stuff it's a bit of a custom job all of this it's still kind of falling apart but it's so much more serviceable than it used to be so you can just like yeah well it doesn't do one two three but at least yeah it's uh, it works it works so still many more things to re re reconnect for example reconnect this to the um, counter board uh, sorry to the sensors board those are like those are sensors so I have to come up with some DuPont connectors again like to, to resolder over here that's the another idea then there is also a speaker which has to be reconnected and the battery so I have to see where are those connecting because I do not remember honestly where they go. So here is one 22, here is number 14, and then I remember something was just soldered straight into like uh, somewhere here, I think. I think negative goes right here. Like, uh, so yeah, I have to think if I just soldered them or, or come up with some better solution than that. Another DuPont connectors. All right, my friends, I have successfully installed um, all bits and pieces together. And as you see, my little sandwich is, I think, sort of working. But it's really hard to tell because it's actually not doing what it's supposed to do. So, uh, I don't know, the, don't remember the user manual, how to operate this thing. But what I remember, when you, this is the push or start button, when you do this, yeah, there is a diff this mode switch. This button is supposed to start counting, counter. It's supposed to count particles, but nothing happening. It's not counting. Also, this button, if you press this button and press this button, is supposed to start counting to uh, some certain number. I think it's 1024, which is internal test. Essentially, this test passes. It's um, okay. So this thing is sort of operating, it's sort of counting. 
Not sure what exactly it's counting at the moment. It's clearly going over 1024. Not sure when it's even gonna stop. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. Anyway, so definitely there is more troubleshooting requires. So I temporarily solders, solder uh, wires and I think I did a good job pretty much connecting all necessary bits and pieces except I didn't connect the speaker. So the speaker is still here in this ugly form here. So this is, has to be still addressed, uh, cleaned up as well. So yeah, but at least the digital part is working and you see some numbers on the display. So yeah, it's definitely going. So it's, yeah, so this part is sort of okay. It just doesn't do the job. So I suspect there is a problem in that other board, the, the board which actually generate uh, sig uh, actually generate high voltage and generate signals. So there are a few possibilities of course. I could have busted something over here. Okay. I didn't connect wires or necessary wires properly. So it's not, for example, I did not connect the 7 and 8, which I don't know what are they. So 6 is connected, 7, 8 not, 9 is connected, but 9 and 8, let me see, I think they are uh, here's nine. It goes over here. So yes, nine and eight is for speaker. So eight is for speaker. Speaker is connected to the ground. To the seven. Okay. So these two are speaker. So no big deal. So that's why they are not connected. So yeah, I have to come up with something because looks like I... Mm, yeah. Oh my god, it's so not designed to be modular. So what else we can do? So we have few electrical capacitors around here. I'm not sure why there is a little plus over here indicating that this is electrolytic. This guy is not. So this is this is electrolytic capacitor. We can check that. Uh, there is no voltage in this KT1, but the problem is I do not have. I can't tell for sure because. Um, I'm not sure what the input impedance of my voltmeter. So yeah, it may be so low current over here that my voltmeter just um, loads it and that's it, cannot read anything. But I will try to kind of buzz through all this circuitry and to understand if there is voltage where it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, I'm gonna check if those chips have voltages as well. There are two chips on the bottom board, I think. Have to double check them. So. Yeah, I have to do some troubleshooting, of course. And obviously now I understand why those wires were soldered, because if it's, everything is soldered, it's so much easier to just twist the board and, you know, start measuring. Also, it's conformally coated, so which is not too cool. Okay, let's do voltage, let's do... I think power is on this side. Power it up. Okay, check first, I think those two, yeah, well, we have pretty shitty voltage, my, my, my tell you, okay, actually there are three chips here, yep, so one, two, and three, okay, so I think number one, seven and fourteen, There's a possibility, all this crap is conformally coded, so there's a possibility that... No, 7 is actually this one, I think. Alright. Yes, this is 7. This is 14, so that's correct. 
So these chips are powered, so it's uh, I did did provide proper voltages for them. So now I have to probably take a look at other components. For example, there are some electrolytic as I mentioned. There is also some kind of soldering jobby over here. I don't know what the hell is that about. It's funny then on this schematic some there are a few capacitors marked with uh, plus si signal is plus sign which they um, implying that this is electrolytic capacitor which is doesn't really make sense because it says C10 2.2 assume this is 2.2 microfarad and then C7 0.22 microfarad why there is a plus here I don't know I don't think it's matter so there is also this transformer one and two it really would be hard to figure out where is one where is two on this transformer yeah it just says T1 actually my bad this little guy which I never seen this before is a electrolytic capacitor over here it says 30 volt 2.2 microfarad so clearly over here is a electrolytic capacitor that's my bad so well, let's find this C7 022 well there is something weird some weird device over here it's, it's a little hard to say if it's C7 so there is no marking on, on the bottom over here and let's see where this C7 goes C7 it goes 11 it goes straight to no 11 is I don't know what the heck is 11 yeah 11 is the, is the signal pin It's connected to diode, resistor, and this, um, and that's it. There is nothing else. Eleven, right? Okay, we have a few diodes over here. We diode over here. You're not sure. It says V two. This is actually this is a diode. I don't know. What the hell is this V? Yeah, it is a diode. So probably this, this is a diode over here. Okay, where is that C7? Connected to 11. Is this tiny guy? Is this, what the hell is this tiny thing? Like, like if you see, see that? What the heck is this? Capacitor? So it goes from 11, here's the 11, it goes straight to here. Yes! Holy smokes, unbelievable! R12 and V3. I don't see R12, but clearly see V3. So R13. I see R13. There is no R12, but 1.8 megohm. 1.8 megohm. Yes, that's a little teeny tiny piece of whatever it is. This 0.22 microfarad capacitor. It's probably some sort of decoupling capacitor or something to this extent. Wow. So we may have a problem, okay? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four electrolytic capacitors to check. That's going to be a challenge, but let's give it a shot. Okay, I hope you remember this, my little friend over here, component tester, and let's see what do we have. I'm not going to zero it for now. Let's see what we measure on this. Okay, polarity is right. Ah, this crop again, all conformally coated. Have to scrape it with. Well, that's pretty good for the. Um, that's pretty good for Rubicon, of course. So Rubicon is in tip-top shape. So that's awesome. Let's check this Soviet capacitor, comrade, over here. Let's see what this guy say. So polarity, I think, is this way. Maybe it's dead. It. It is dead ski. Okay, let's check Rubicon again. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's check this. Whatever it is, weird ass capacitor I've never seen before. Well, I mean, probably never seen that many things in Soviet electronics because. Shows nothing. Hmm. Let's try to get to some meat. Here. Okay, let's do yeah, good again. Observing polarity. Uh oh, oh, this one is good. I think, yeah. This one is good. So this dude is alive. Let's double check our another soviet capacitor polarity i think goes this way oh it's super fiddly okay this is need to unsolder it yeah looks like it's that let's check this who knows what the heck it is maybe it will be easier on this side I think it's here. Well, I don't know polarity of that thing. It doesn't say. Yeah, is it? Well, we can calculate it. So if it's connected to pin 11, to pin 11, pin 11 was positive. So let's go like this. Hmm. Well, as far as I think it's alive, actually. Oh, wow. 15.7 ohm uh, for 0 0.2 microfarads, it's actually okay. So, I'm afraid, I'm afraid this guy, which is, what's the polarity of it again? Positive goes close to the little guy. This guy is dead key. Okay.
Well, 5 microfarad, 16 volt. Well, 16 volt is not a problem, 5 microfarad is a problem. I may have 4.7. which I will try to replace it with. But first I will double check this. Looks like someone already replacing this capacitor. Okay. We just test it again. Did it leak? Yeah, it does look like it's leaked. Okay, we can test it this time. Can shut you down for now. Alright, you can test it like this. Yeah, right. Gonissimo. Yeah, it's totally not, not alive. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, my friends, turn out to be, I do not have 5 microfarad, I have 2.2, 50 volt, and 10, this tiny Nichicon, uh, and this one Panasonic, uh, 10, 16, so, I'm kind of inclined to put 10, 16 here, rather than 2.2, 50, so, but we will do experiments, so first of all, let's check these guys, how are they faring against... Hello? Okay. How about you, my friend? It's interesting. Smaller capacity has better resistance in this case. Try again. It's bad contact. Maybe it's too small. But whatever. I'm gonna just put it in. Okay. I'm gonna leave enough leads just to remove it if I change my mind. Okay, little 10 microfarad, uh, I would solder on this side too, because who knows how good is this double. Double siding kind of via stuff. Make sure I'm not gonna short the other. Okay, 
Here's our tiny capacitor, solder it in. Let's make sure we don't short anything while we're doing that. Looks like it's all good. Okay, let's assemble it and see what's happening. Assemble this Frankenstein of a dosimeter. Yeah, sometimes it's very fiddly. Okay, here we are. Now I'm gonna use this as a prop. Okay, everything is connected. Let's power it up. Nothing changed, of course. Let's play. Oh my god! Two, three, four. It's freaking working! Six. It's actually counting radiation right now. I suppose to, I think it's supposed to stop at like 25, 30 kind of range. 10, 11, 12. It's supposed to beep as well. 13. All right, um, I'm gonna stop it for now because I'm st my work is still not over. First of all, battery has to be replaced. Secondly, uh, all these things I wanted to make them uh, be reconnectable. So this is something I would like to do as well because it's gonna be way less hustle. Yeah, and also have to think how to first of all use better battery terminal as I mentioned I'm gonna use these which is so much nicer uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna would be able to actually make them removable there is not much space here unfortunately so maybe that's gonna work we just solder them straight in and this one is pain in ass Alrighty, so finally I tried to put it all, <clears throat> assemble it together. Um, the only thing what's left to fix is this to replace this LCD, but because I don't have a part and just uh, still need to do research what I can put in here, I'm gonna keep it as it is. So I resoldered with with, with uh, hard hard or with uh, sadness I actually resoldered this one and resoldered this one because I couldn't come up with any good idea how to uh, make a connect nice connector for this in for this so for now again I'm gonna keep it like this unfortunately now I have to disassemble it because this board is supposed to be screwed in over here this has to be placed just like that Mm -hmm. Alright, so I hope I'm not mistaken. Hmm, looks like this wire is not really... <laughs> now I understand why they were using those tiny dinky wires. Yeah, because it sort of interferes. Let me try 
put it different way. Let me try to push it like that. Yeah, this thing might might be better, maybe. So now these guys, yeah, it's not it's not amazing at all. This guy's supposed to be here. This guy's supposed to be here. Something not right here. Yeah, I don't like this, but Okay, now this board board goes turn it like this and try just try to plug it in. And it's so much harder to do when you do not see what's happening down there. Well, oh yeah, have to cut this through. Okay. I have to just pray because I have no idea if everything is making good contact down there. Okay, before assembling, let me try to power it up. Beep, yes. So this is the test mode. I don't know if it's gonna work properly or not, but just let's give it a shot. Honestly, I don't know what's happening. It's supposed to stop.
I don't know if if or ever it's gonna stop. Hmm, okay, it's getting too long. Okay, what is this? Yeah, I need to read the user manual on this device because honestly I do not remember <laughs> what mode work work uh, 05. Uh, whatever it means. In the meantime, I'm gonna gonna assemble it just like that. Yeah, it's gone again. The same pretty much problem that these wires are too thick for this. Is it? Yeah, it looks like. Or there is something else. Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. Here's those ancient screws. Well, technically, one more screw can go in here. Yeah, you just have to fall out there, right? Technically, one more screw can go in here. I love those flat head. Okay, so this is gonna hold this thing a little bit better. I'm not sure what's interfering here, but... Okay. Sorry, I'm not following. Why? Oh, I see. There's more screws right here too. So yeah. This one goes in here. There's another one. And this tiny one goes in here. Okay. It looks like I have only three of these guys, so yeah, have to make best of them. And the third one. Alright, uh, I know this was a little long video, but I think this thing deserves really good and thorough 
uh, work. So uh, because this is quite a unique and rare item and, and it also has a lot of history behind it, I think I would like to actually restore it properly and have it operational. As you see it's sort of kind of working, sort of not, so I still have to um, manufacture a battery compartment over here, I still have to calibrate it and I still have to figure out how to replace this LCD and I would like to actually get a proper LCD not to MacGyver some kind of whole bunch of wires and rewire some uh, one hand low LCD that's available from any foreign market which is probably easier work in terms of time but buying proper time from the Russian, Ukrainian or Belarus supplier probably will be quite involving because I'd want to pay $50 those crooks on eBay charging for a similar LCD. 50 I said, not 15. 5 0 is retarded. Anyways, uh, so let's uh, take a look. So it obviously works. It does some job. I do not remember those what those modes means. I still have to figure read up on uh, my um, user manual, find it first, PDF or scan of some sort and find it and read it will be will be good to and actually understand how to operate this. Um, so there it has two modes and it has self-test. So self-test is works like this. You start self-test and it counting. It's supposed to count to a certain number and if this number when it stops, it's supposed to be 1024. Let's see where it's going, but I think it was completely wrong. Uh, my previous time, the uh, my previous run, run attempt, but so this is what I mean. I have to calibrate it because I replace capacitor. Maybe this this you know. Oh, it's actually end up at one thousand thirty three. I th think it is actually pretty good for what we got here. Plus the battery is dying. It's not nine volts. It's like almost seven and a half now. So I have to take this in account as well. Wow, it's actually pretty positive. I'm really really happy with this repair. So it does sort of work and count something and its self-control is almost passing. I don't know, I think you can kind of here and there say it's pretty close to 1024. So now it's count, I think it's counting the background, the radiation phone, and I don't know how to say it in English. Uh, general radiation at the moment. The only thing I'm not sure, there's too many commas over here and I hope it's not this, okay, it's 0 0.09 yeah, so 0 0.09, whatever it is. I think it's micro ran hand an hour but 0 0.09 micro ran hands or 9 micro ran hands it's a good question because that's the the, the devil's in the details. It's, it could be quite substantial uh, radiation, if I'm mistaken, uh, by the. Uh, uh, so guys, I think this was quite a successful repair. I still gonna do the uh, the fixes what I mentioned, but th that's gonna be part two, and who knows when it's gonna be because I still need to source those parts. I manufacture uh, also manufacture the battery cover, and um, when uh, I gonna fix the other things, I also gonna read up on the user manual and I will explain you actually how to operate this device properly. So again, sorry for long video, thank you for watching and see you next time in another episode of Inside Out Electronics.